The most popular girl in the school turns out to be an otaku and starts dating a loser. In the last episode, we saw how Yuto and Haruka had developed their friendship even more after going to Natsukami, and we saw the protective side of Yuto when people started bothering her. Late at night, Mika calls Yuto, sounding scared for Haruka, and at the same time, Haruka bursts into Yuto's house, looking visibly distressed. Let's continue after that. We see that Haruka's father, a towering man in a black suit, looks visibly angry. All of Haruka's anime, manga, and games are thrown all around the room. He makes a phone call and orders his special military group, Hellhound, to use all their resources to find Haruka at any cost. Haruka arrives at Yuto's place and with teary eyes tells Yuto about how, by the time she reached back home, she found her dad in her room and all of her things thrown across the floor. She got upset and ran straight to Yuto's place for help and comfort. We see that Hazuki has followed Haruka and, for a moment, think that Hazuki is here on Haruka's father's orders to bring her back. But Hazuki clarifies that she will always be loyal to Haruka and make sure that she is protected. And if she doesn't want to go back home, Hazuki will help her to stay over at that place till this problem is solved. Yuto gets surprised by this invitation and starts blushing and Haruka denies the offer, saying that she wouldn't want to burden the Ayase household with her presence. Yuto stands up and tells Haruka that it is not a burden at all and he would love to have both Haruka and Hazuki as guests for as long as necessary. Ruko tells them that their parents have gone out of the country, so there are some empty rooms for them to sleep in. They all sit down at the kotatsu to eat, and Hazuki compliments Yuto's cooking skills after tasting his hot pot, telling him that he is good husband material. Ruko, Yukari, and Hazuki start bothering Yuto by asking him what was going on between Yuto and Haruka, and Yuto gets tired of their antics and moves out of the room. He goes upstairs and gets a call from Mika, who tells Yuto that her father has called in the Hellhounds and has put them on the search for Haruka. Yuto gets scared, but Mika tells him to hold on and keep Haruka hidden for 23 hours, after which the best and the most powerful weapon will arrive. Yuto goes back downstairs to find out that everyone is asleep, but to his surprise, Hazuki says out loud that she is still awake. She gets up and tells Yuto that she is going outside to keep an eye on the neighborhood and make sure that it is safe for Haruka. As back at the mansion, there were a lot of security measures, but here, Haruka is a sitting duck for any attacks. Yuto gets concerned for her as she looks drunk, but she tells Yuto that she will be fine and he should take care of Haruka as if she stays asleep on the couch, she will catch a cold. Yuto picks Haruka up and starts moving upstairs, but on the stairs, Haruka wakes up and gets happy to see Yuto carrying her. Yuto takes her to an empty room and tucks her in, then moves back to his own room. Later that night, Haruka knocks on Yuto's door and asks him whether she can sleep in the same room as she doesn't like being alone, to which Yuto agrees. Even after that, Haruka is unable to sleep, so she asks Yuto if they could hold hands, to which Yuto holds her hand. Before Yuto could say anything, Haruka fell asleep. The next day, Yuto wakes up to find Haruka missing and gets scared. He runs downstairs but finds Haruka cooking breakfast, and at the same time, his phone starts ringing. He picks it up to find Mika on the other side, sounding stressed. She informs Yuto that her father is aware of their location, and Hazuki rushes in to inform Yuto of the same. There is a knock at the door, and before Yuto can answer it, the door gets slashed to bits and Haruka's father walks inside. He is attacked by Ruki with a katana, but defends himself, and all of them are subdued by the hellhounds apart from Haruka and Yuto. Haruka's father throws Yuto at the wall, and Haruka runs to check on him. Her father tells her to quit this farce, to which she takes a stand and refuses to come back with him. Yuto gets angry and starts talking back to her father, asking why she can't have her hobbies and whether he even knows his own daughter well. Before the situation could get any worse, Mika and Nanami arrive with the secret weapon, which turns out to be their mom. Haruka's mom rebukes her husband and tells him that Haruka is her daughter as well and she can have whatever hobby she wants as long as she is getting good grades. Haruka's father bends down to his wife and apologizes to Yuto, and Yuto apologizes as well. They say goodbye to Haruka's mom and dad, and then all of them go inside to have a hearty breakfast. Some days later, Mika is chatting with her friends, and one of them got asked out on a date by a guy, and she wants to take advice from Mika, as they all think she knows a lot about dating guys. She gives them advice, but later in the car on the way back with Nanami, she reveals that she has never been on a date or had any guy friends because she attends an all-girls school. 
school and Nanami drops and picks her up from school every day. Both of them reach home and Mika gets word that Haruka and Yuta are in Haruka's room, so she goes there to eavesdrop. After getting the wrong notion, she bursts through the door only to find out that Haruka and Yuto were cooking pancakes for everyone. After Yuto goes back home, Mika calls him and asks him to meet her on Sunday as she has something very important to tell him, which she can't do on the phone. Yuto agrees and goes to the location on Sunday to meet Mika. Mika is well-dressed, whereas Yuto is underdressed, which Mika points out and tells Yuto that they are on a date. Yuto gets surprised, but Mika tells him that Haruka is completely oblivious and Yuto isn't making any moves, and all they do is chat about anime and mangas. They start moving and Mika keeps teaching Yuto things like holding hands, complimenting your date, and how to be more romantic by looking directly into their eyes. They go to see a movie and Mika falls asleep on Yuto's shoulders. Yuto looks at her and smiles while Mika starts talking in her sleep about some inappropriate things, which forces them to leave the theater. They start walking again and Mika reveals that they are going to the fireworks festival and she has called Haruka to meet them there after her dance class. While on the way to the festival, they end up meeting with Shina, who is dressed in a yukuda and is also going to watch the festival. Mika gets jealous when Yuto starts talking to Shina and after she leaves, Mika takes takes Yuto to a shop to get Yukata for the both of them. She compliments Yuto and he compliments her back. They move toward the festival ground, enjoying the festivities. Once the fireworks start, Mika is unable to see them because of her short stature, so Yuto carries her on her back. Haruka arrives with Nanami and Hazuki and they enjoy the fireworks. The next day at school, Yukari greets them all and reveals that the school is going to have a festival and she needs a girl and a boy representative. Shina volunteers after no one was willing to take the hard task, after which Yukari forces Yuta to take on the role of her male counterpart. They are chosen as the class representatives and everyone seems to be happy. Over the next couple of days, Shina and Yuta start making preparations for the festival. The entire class gives suggestions, such as food stalls, haunted houses, plays, etc. From the back of the class comes a familiar voice that suggests Cosplay Cafe, which turns out to be Nobunaga, who isn't even from the same class. Even then, he convinces everyone about this idea, and this idea ends up winning the vote by a split decision. After that, Yuto starts being really busy, and Haruka gets a bit uneasy, seeing that Yuto was spending so much time with Shina because of the representative duties. One day, Yuto rushes into the classroom and asks Haruka whether she would be willing to take him to a place so he can learn more about cosplays. Haruka is delighted to hear it, as it would mean spending more time with him. They go to a market that specializes in cosplay costumes, and Haruka ends up trying some of them. Yuto gets her a music box, which Haruka is delighted to accept. Everything seems to be going fine when Yuto receives a call from Mika, who tells him to be careful and run away from the place they are currently at as Haruka's father is zeroing in on their position with his hellhounds. Yuto looks confused as he thinks he has nothing to be afraid of as the conflict with Haruka's father was sorted earlier. The hellhounds and Haruka's father surround them with cars, and Haruka's father ends up attacking Yuto. Thankfully, Nanami and Hazuki are able to come in at the right moment to block the attack. Another car stops them from behind, and Haruka's mother comes out of it with Mika. She tells Haruka's father to back off and asks Haruka for an explanation. It turns out that Haruka had a meeting with her teacher and her father today, but she ditched it to be on a date with Yuto. Haruka exclaims that she did it because it made her very happy, and she wanted to seize the moment because she didn't know when Yuto would be free again. She takes all the blame, but Yuto jumps in and claims that he was at fault because he didn't ask Haruka whether she was free or not. Haruka's mother seems moved by this show of protection and genuine feeling between the two, and she forgives Haruka and warns her that it should never be repeated again. The next few days seem to be going excellent for both Haruka and Yuto as the romantic bond between them keeps strengthening. One day, we see that Haruka wakes up early in the morning and is making cookies for Yuto. She seems very happy and goes to school to give Yuto the cookies, but as she opens the door of the classroom, she is shocked as she sees Yuto and Shina in a very compromised position. The basket of cookies drops from her hands and she runs away without saying a word. That was it for the recap, guys. Did anybody else see that coming? Let us know in the comments. Also, subscribe and turn on the notification bell to watch the next part of Nogizaka Haruka's secret when it comes out. Thanks for watching Anime Reborn, and we'll see you guys in the next video.